Hey guys, I'm Shantanu Udasi back again with another video recapping everything that has been happening in the world of artificial intelligence. Let's not waste any more time and let's just get into our stories. Our first story is ImageNet gets a privacy overhaul. What about other data sets? So it involves ethics of artificial intelligence and data sets like ImageNet and what they are doing is ethical or not. So if you guys don't know, ImageNet started its operations in the infancy of the internet and artificial intelligence as well as social media back in 2009 and back there there was no awareness about ethics or how to use pictures that are freely available on the internet. Back then ImageNet used Amazon Mechanical Turk workers to collect images of thousands of objects and people without their explicit consent. In 2012 the ImageNet large scale visual recognition challenge was launched and its large data set gave companies the peek into what the potential of artificial intelligence was. Since then the ImageNet's data set has expanded over 1.5 million images categorized under 1000 words, 17% of which contain human faces, yet only three categories are related to people. Finally, ImageNet realized that this is ethically very murky and using people's images, especially in today's world when your facial recognition data can link to your mobile phone, your laptops and even your social security number and private details in the government database. So ImageNet has finally decided to blur the faces of the photographs of people that they take to train their data set. Yet they say that this is not a shortcoming for the artificial intelligence, but the artificial intelligence will not recognize the person the photo belongs to by the blurred face and that's a step in the right direction. So we recently covered in another news that Facebook is also working on a software for image recognition and they are treating their artificial intelligence by feeding images that are freely available on their platform including people's faces. But only the people from the European Union were exempt from this experiment because their government has robust privacy policies against social media and artificial intelligence at large. So in conclusion the only way around this is that the government needs to have robust policies and frameworks in order to protect their people's privacy because the big companies, tech companies and artificial intelligence companies have very grey areas when it comes to artificial intelligence and its ethics. Moving on to our next story, I hope you are not sick of hearing about COVID-19 but this relates to COVID-19 but in a good way. FDA authorizes first machine learning based COVID screening device. So this device has neural networks and sensors that will recognize the COVID-19 symptoms in an asymptomatic person but it is not an alternative for COVID-19 testing. So it was issued as an emergency use authorization by the US Food and Drug Administration for a company called Tiger Tech to release their machine learning based COVID-19 non-diagnostic screen device. So basically it is an armband and how it works is that it is equipped with light sensor and a small computer processor which when wrapped around a patient's bare arm will provide the prediction of whether individual is showing COVID symptoms or not. It first analyzes your pulse from the blood flow which is then used to extract some key features such as pulse rate. These pulses then are fed into machine learning model which then makes the necessary predictions. The results are displayed using colored lights on the armbands that indicate the presence of certain biomarkers. These biomarkers can be from blood pressure to coagulation in the chest to internal organs and their workings and these are to be used as COVID-19 biomarkers for asymptomatic patients. So it has a good accuracy rate yet the government has denied to use it as a substitute for COVID-19 testing. Moving on to our next story. Our next story is about the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. They are testing an artificial intelligent dog fighting plane in two versus one simulations. So basically what this means is that they are training an artificial intelligence to control an aircraft in a situation when it is overpowered by two more aircrafts. While we have covered the news that they have found out an artificial intelligence that can handle the plane on its own but this time for this simulation of 2 versus 1 they had to put a pilot in and the pilot was following instructions given completely by the artificial intelligence and it seems to be very very successful. Moving on to our next story, MIT's new artificial intelligence algorithm designs soft robots that sense. 
So when we covered that artificial intelligence will require a sense of its surroundings to make better and intuitive decisions, we also covered that robots will need to have soft forms and robots will have to analyze their surroundings in order to make better decisions. And the current structure in which the robots are working, it's not suitable for intuitive decision making via artificial intelligence. Hence, deep learning techniques in MIT are being used to optimize the arrangement of sensors on a robot's body to ensure efficient operation. So they are basically working on soft bodied robots that are flexible and pliant and they generally feel more like a bouncy ball rather than a bowling ball. The rigid limbs of a robot will make calculations by an artificial intelligence more complex and hence it will not be able to complete certain tasks while if the robot is more soft and pliable and adaptive it will make it easier for the artificial intelligence to create tasks and accomplish them. So it is a good news that we are using deep learning and machine learning to enhance artificial intelligence itself. Let's move on to our last story. Our last story is a big one where we have time and again covered the causality of machine learning versus the statistical data approach to machine learning. In this article, we will analyze why machine learning struggles with causality. So we all know the concept of causality because it is basically works on our intuition, but it is very difficult to transfer it to machine learning and deep learning. The environmental factors are often ignored in machine learning because we count it as intuition and something that we do as a reflex action and hence we understand them and marginalize them as nuances and then we code them out of our machine learning systems and make it strictly data driven. So the example that is given here about image recognition software when we strictly train it on statistical approach. If a neural network is trained on millions of images of chair can fail when they see that same object under new lighting condition or from slightly different angles or against new backgrounds. But it is impossible to increase this data set by every way and every possible way because the environmental factors are so huge in our surroundings that it is impossible to feed everything in every perspective into a machine learning model. Lack of causal understanding makes it very hard to make predictions and deal with novel situations. This is why our self-driving cars make weird and dangerous mistakes even after being trained on half a million miles. But thankfully it is being worked on and causality is being added to machine learning softwares namely in two forms, a structural causal model and independent causal mechanisms. In general, these principles state that instead of looking for a superficial statistic correlation or pattern recognition, an AI system should be able to identify causal variables and separate their effects on the environment. So continuing off with the example of chair, if we feed an image of chair to a causal model, it can recognize that it is a chair regardless of environment, lighting or change in perspective. So that's about it. Those were all the articles that I have for you today. I am Shantanu Udasi signing off. But before I go, I will recommend you highly read all these articles in their entirety. Links for them will be in the description down below. And as always, please click on that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss any other updates from Analytics India magazine ever again.